Hi everyone, this is Howard of Forward or Learn to Fly. Together with the developers of multiplayer model matching, the testers, and the sim flyers of Microsoft Flight Simulator, we bring you this M3 video tutorial. Come join us. Let's have a look at the contents of this tutorial. We will start with introductions to the developers, the testers, the manual that comes with the product, and our expectations. Next, we define what M3 is. We will look at a SIM system without using M3, and then a system that utilizes this much needed tool. In section three, we get right into it with follow along procedures and references to the manual. Now we can all start with a basic mode and follow along in the PDF manual from the product and then stop there. Many have done that already. We will still go through basic mode to get you started and see results right away. Eventually, you will venture into advanced mode, and that's where the strength of the tutorial comes in. It is so much better to hear the developer talking about procedures and showing them on screen than to take a hundred snapshots for the manual. In advanced mode, we will learn how to import source and target airplanes dive into files we need to see, and copy important data from config files to accurately add airplanes to your M3 database. This can be tricky, and it can affect the stability of your SIM unless you do it correctly. This tutorial helps you with making that happen accurately. During those tutorial steps, we will also do some testing and reveal some tips on how to test. We will also show you how to make multiple configuration sets for different scenarios. We will cap the tutorials with a browse of the most asked questions about this fantastic product. In closing, we summarize all that we did and we thank you for your patience during the video tutorial. We also give you scan codes on screen to useful links like Discord servers, websites, and other resources. We hope you have your simulator closed down for the moment and your M3 configuration tool open and ready to go. Let's dive in. Let's start with introductions. Here you can see Andrew and me who will be your guide when the developers aren't doing demonstrations. Andrew is the co-host on the Ford or Learn to Fly Twitch channel and a tester of the M3 product since it started. You can also see this manual, the Multiplayer Model Matching User Guide. We'll have to keep that nearby also. This is version 1.3 as of this recording. The developers would like to thank the testers who spent hours ensuring the product works as it should and making suggestions along the way. Now that the product is released, there will be, of course, thousands more testers that will help shape the future updates of this product. I would like to also introduce Danny Malloy and Fly and Dive. These two developers are the ones who brought us this great product. And we want to thank them for this utility that's been very much needed in Microsoft Flight Simulator. For those of you who still don't have M3 ready to use on your own computers, here is the scan code and the URL to get it. You might want to try things as you see them done. Now that you've downloaded M3, you should see a folder and you should see a PDF. The first thing we'll do is we'll open this PDF and just see what's inside. Once you've opened the manual, then we get to the getting started page, a few pages down. And you'll notice when we get there, we're just going to have a quick look at what's inside. You'll notice it's simply talking about what we just did. Then we'll say we'll open the folder, the MM3 version 1.3 folder and double click on the multiplayer model matching EXE. And then it's recommended we create that shortcut and notice that it's a standalone executable. Now this is important. Uh, it does not need to be installed on your PC. You can run this anywhere, your laptop or somewhere else. However, you may need to allow runtime privileges. In other words, right click it and say run as administrator. In some cases, depends on your system. When you go into the folder, you'll notice that there's a lot of stuff there the only thing we're concerned about at this point is the executable file. That's the multiplayer model matching executable. And from there we do all the configuration. None of this sits in your community folder. This will be generating a folder that we're going to move over 
to the community folder. When we get to advanced mode, I highly recommend that you run this on the machine where your SIM is installed. You'll need to dive into your community folder and find some configuration files at that point and do some copying. So it's going to be the most convenient to install this and run this on your actual SIM PC. Next, we want to understand what is multiplayer model matching. The manual does a good job of this. We'll just briefly look at it. All of you can certainly read the manual on your own, but take a look here. First of all, let's just look at the objective. The M3 objective is to eliminate or reduce the number of multiplayer generic aircraft you see in the game. We all know what this is like, especially when you're new in the sim and you don't have a lot of aircraft that you have bought. Tons of people are out there flying all kinds of liveries and all kinds of airplanes that they have bought and they show up on your screen as either an A330 airliner or they show up as a bonanza, a generic bonanza. Many of us call it the finanza because it's not really a bonanza. So even a helicopter could be flying, hovering, taking off and it looks like a, a bonanza with tricycle gear. So what we can do with this tool is take a list of those source aircraft that you don't have installed and simply match them to something you do have installed. And that way, at least it shows up as an aircraft that's similar. All right, that's the whole objective so that we don't see a bunch of airliners flying with us or we don't see a bunch of bonanzas. And then when someone actually does fly a bonanza, at least you'll see it as a bonanza. <laughs> So it's worth noting, now that we know what it is, and it's simply a configuration folder that we're going to be putting in the community folder after we configure it, we just need to run this tool and figure out which planes get matched to which planes. Simple as that. So the first thing you have to understand, and this is what the developers had to understand first, is how does Microsoft Flight Simulator handle multiplayer model matching? And if you take a look at this flowchart, it really does help to understand what it what works. Now, um, a livery, we've mentioned the word livery already, and there's also something called the ICAO. This is simply a, a, an acronym, the aircraft designator, which is given to every airplane. Now, when developers make their airplanes, they give it an ICAO code of some sort. And for the most part, a lot of them already have proper ICAO codes. Some of them don't, and that's what kind of makes the system confused. But we can go in and manually figure out what those things are. So you notice their note in here on the right, less than 50% of the aircraft models in MSFS use an official ICAO designator. And that's part of the problem. How does it ever match inside the sim if there isn't a proper designator? Model matching in Microsoft Life Simulator is a problem from the very start because the ICAO designator is also checked against an official database. So you can see up here is in, in multiplayer, the user nears an aircraft. So as we get closer and we can start to see what it actually looks like, it goes through this logic. Does the user have the same livery title? Which a new user won't. In that case, it says, is the aircraft ICAO recognized by the simulation? That could be a yes or no. And if it's no, the user sees an appropriate generic aircraft. There's our normal flow right there for the majority of the aircraft until you buy them. Now, if you buy that aircraft, even if you don't fly it, you'll see it properly, unless they use a different livery. And there's plenty of liveries. These are the paint schemes. These are the things that make it look different. They make it look like all the airlines that you see. And so those are great things to have, but you can't possibly download every one of them and hope that it shows up properly. So even if the livery doesn't match something you have, then you could end up with a generic airplane. All right, so that was the next check that it does. Does the user have the same livery title that you have? Then you'll see it correctly. In most cases, we're gonna say no. You didn't download all of them when those multiplayer users downloaded them. Is the aircraft IKEA recognized by the simulation? In this case, we'll say yes. The user sees an aircraft with similar characteristics based on the IKEA. And so that's what we want to work with. This is the logic already. Now we want to put in an extra configuration folder with all of the model matching source to a target. The target will be all the base planes that you have or imported planes that we'll cover in the advanced section. Next, how does M3 work? And this is actually a very good screen. I really like this. Um, it generates a single package of small aircraft configuration files. So it's a folder and we place it in the community folder. 
Now it redirects multiplayer aircraft models that you don't have installed to similar ones you do have installed. And you can see by this example right here, here's the first example we'll look at. What they have, you're looking out your the cockpit of your airplane and you're seeing this, the Parallel 42 Kit Fox, very popular plane. That's what they have, but you don't have it, especially a new user, they don't have it. So what do you see? Well, you'll see the generic Bonanza. And because the Kit Fox is a tail dragger, you'll see a Bonanza with its nose wheel up in the air like that. That's the hint right there. Well, that's got to be a tail dragger, and I obviously don't have that plane. What you see if you do have M3 installed and you've done this model matching, you've picked a plane that's a tail dragger. Now, there's the stock plane, the Beaver, that came with the 40th anniversary. It is a tail dragger. So although it's not the same as a Kit Fox, at least you're seeing a tail dragger airplane. And there's, there's what we're talking about here. The second scenario I want to talk about here is about the aircraft livery. And this is a really good screen that it's talking about here. So here we see the Parallel 42 Kit Fox with a custom livery. What you'll see without M3, it says, I don't have a livery match, so we're going to give you that same generic Bonanza again. So what we can say is, we already own the Parallel 42 Kit Fox, but we don't have that custom livery. But what we can say is, it's a Kit Fox. Let's match it to our Kit Fox or our generic Kit Fox that we have, so that at least it's still the same plane even though we can't possibly have the thousands of liveries that are available for this airplane. This, to me, is even more important because you could have all the planes that other people have, but you certainly don't have all the liveries. And they could make their own liveries. How could you possibly have them? So this is really valuable to try and reduce all those generic finances that we have out there. So let's get started here. This is your basic mode. And from this screen, it's very easy to get started, as you can see from the screen. And when you look around at the source aircraft are listed right here on the left. And that those source aircraft, you can just scroll through them. You should get familiar with what you have here. And the source aircraft, none of them have been model matched to anything. This is the enable model matching column. There's the secret right there. Now you could very easily just enable matching selected, disable matching selected, you could do all, all right? And you can do some fun things with the tool. But what I want to show you is how easy it is. For instance, let's say you don't have the Osprey. And this is what it is. The source aircraft, all known aircraft that are in the sim are here. And what they've done is they've simply given us everything that could possibly be there. And you can still import your own. But in this case, the Osprey, which is a helicopter, really. And um, so what you could do, and they've given some guesses already, or you can pick from the list what you're going to match it to. But I could match that to a 407 if I don't own it. Now, if I own it, I want to leave it like that. It already will be the, the one that I have. Um, but uh, if you take a look at something else here too, there's other helicopters like the Huey. All right, there's another helicopter. Look at all these helicopters that are here. Now, there's two different 206s. Um, when you look down here, one's by fly inside, one's by count. So I have the count one, but I don't have the fly inside. So I'd go like that. Oops, wrong one. I'd go like this, and it would show up as a Bell 407 instead of a Bonanza. All right, and you could also pick something else from the list if it were here. All right, whatever you want it to be. And you know, how many helicopters do we have by default? We really only have two target helicopters. Now in the advanced section of this video and this tutorial, we will be working with the developer who will show us and walk us through how to add more target aircraft. This is the tricky part. And I say tricky because you have to put in all of the information from each of the config files. So you got to be able to find the config files, copy some stuff and put them in. So we'll get into that in the advance. This is the default and this is what you get. But the point is that any helicopter that you don't have here, do you have this one? Okay, so let's make that a Bell 47. But as you can see, all of these are already matched to something, and they might all be good. So just have to walk through them, have a look, see what you like, and you could just keep clicking all the way down the list, and you could just keep picking the ones that you want. All right, and so then, you know, all, and it says clear targets and selected rows. All right, so I'm just going to clear the target there, and now you can just pick up specific ones along the way. 
So now the whole point about all of this is the matching itself. Now what I want to show you as we go along, um, here is source aircraft categories. Let's let's try this first. I just want to show you what the categories are. So there really is only this many categories, but this many aircraft count in each category. 100 in military, 100 in single engine, 41 in vintage. So you get the idea. Now. As I mentioned, you can add more, but from this stock list, what this really is, and I just want to show you something here. Let's go to advanced mode for a second. In advanced mode, you can now go and take a look at the source aircraft. Source aircraft categories, we already saw that. Um, if we were to say export source aircraft, now it actually shows us all the aircraft that are there. And this is actually a good idea to export. Now we'll get into that and we'll see when, when they show us how to do all of that. But the whole idea is that you can, you can export these and do backups and we'll get into that as we go along. Uh, import update source aircraft and we'll get it. That's more advanced stuff. All right. So that's the idea. Um, now if you go take a look at target aircraft. When you look at target aircraft, what they've done, the developers have added all of the standard edition aircraft because if you have deluxe or, or deluxe premium uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, then you could add more, of course, and they may make some files available for us to do that. The reason they took them out, of they originally had all of them in there. The reason they took them out is many people will have standard edition and yet you're trying to target aircraft that they don't have. There's a problem targeting aircraft they don't have. So they've left it with what everybody has, which is standard edition. All of these come in the standard edition. So that that's a, there's a chart and you'll see a link here in this video, you'll see a link underneath that will show you um, the chart that Microsoft provides of all the aircraft and which editions are in. That's a really handy picture. And um, so, so that's just giving you an idea of what's here. And then you can do the export import from there. And in the advanced part, we'll do that. So from the source screen, matching enabled and pick it up. And then you simply generate a file from there. You see up here, it says generate package. So let's say that I just did a simple one right here. I, let's say I don't have the H125. I'm gonna give the stock Bell 407. We only really have two helicopters that are in the target aircraft list. That's the Bell 407 and the Cabri. And so what we want to do is pick one of them. At least we see a helicopter when something is hovering, right? And that's the idea behind it. So what we want to do now is if we've, if we've selected all the ones we want, we want to generate the package. It says package already exists. Are you sure you want to overwrite existing package in the output folder? Sure. And it says you can find the generated package in the following location. Wherever I started this program is what it is, you guys. And it's here in the output folder. All right. And it says copy this folder and it's called ZMMM to your community folder or link it using the MS add-ons linker. So wherever you put aircraft, now put it there and use your linker, which, which I have. Um, and then I'll just go into my linker and link it. But the simple thing is you can put it straight in your community folder, whether you use the linker or not. All right. It'll pick it up from the community folder. All right. So let's just go have a look at that, at the generated file that it made. Let's go into here. into okay i guess we pause for a second i was sure it was open fine here all right let's pick it up from here so now we go back into the folder where you started and you'll notice in there now we have an output folder that folder is already there and here's our new file that was just made today all right and in there you'll notice there's some things now this is like the sort of thing that when you put something in the community folder, you see a layout JSON file, you see a manifest file, you see a sim objects file, you see an air traffic file. So, you know, you could see these things and this is what we put in. This is the folder we're going to put in. We grab that, we copy it and we put it in your community folder. I have a shortcut here, so it makes it easier. This is my linker, which links all these, but you can still pop it in here. It'll work from here or with the linker. The linker is better later on, but so there it is right at the bottom right there. And now it's there. Anytime that H125 is in multiplayer nearby me, at least there'll be a helicopter. That's how simple this is, you guys. And I want to do one simple thing first. Now, some of you will just m click on all the model matches and say, select them all <laughs> and start with that because you don't have any of the new stuff. 
Now I've got quite a few new things being a streamer on Twitch and I have to do multiplayer sessions every Saturday for a few years now. So I've got a lot of airplanes and I work with developers who give me uh, beta products and, and final products. So I've got a lot already. So I'm going to have to be more f fine tuned. I'm going to have to go in there and really pick apart what exactly I really want to use. Now, one last example in uh, in basic mode here, and before we move on, uh, here's an example where I've simply just gone to the category and searched, and here's the category I picked helicopter. All right, let's just go back and do all categories. This is the screen you had. All right, so let's go back and just say I want to do helicopters, and I've already selected a bunch of them to save time here in the video, but as you can see, the way to do this is if you own an airplane, for instance, this one here, the Alouette, I own that. Um, the Cowan Simulation uh, uh, B06 helicopter, or 206B. So, so this one I own, but I don't own the flying side like I mentioned earlier. So I leave it unchecked if I own it, and it'll show up the way it's supposed to. I check it if I don't own it, and send it over to something else, whatever's on this list. Now, I'd like to import a new target and use the 206. All right, and so that's something that I can do later in advanced. But for now, I'm just picking the 407. If someone's flying the fly inside version, instead of seeing a Bonanza, I'm going to see a helicopter hovering. And you can see that I did that for most of the helicopters that are here because I don't own them all. And you notice in here, the Mini 500, I do own it, so you leave it unchecked. And um, the R22, we did an original helicopter series learning series with that, so I have it, the R44. And um, and then this one, the uh, Gazelle. I don't have that. Okay, so let's just check that one too. All right, and then the, uh, the Velocity, or Velocity, however you want to call it. So these are all the ones that I want to do model matching, the ones that are checked. There we go. Now, I could just do helicopters only, generate my package, and away I go. All right, and it says you can find the generated package here, and this one is actually called uh, ZMMM multiplayer model matching folder. And then it says, you know, move that over, copy it over. So let's go have a look. But you know, that's, it, it's actually good to see what it looks like. But here, here we can just go to the file system, go over to our M folder like this. Again, we go to output and we can see this is the actual file. Just out of, out of curiosity, we can go into sim objects, airplanes, and just see there they all are, H-135, the, the V-22 Osprey. Here we can see uh, the Schweizer, the H-34. You can see all of them are in here. And so there's one for each airplane that I've checked. That goes in, not this part, but, you know, this file. Oops, come back to here, come back to here. This file now goes into my folder. Now, I could just um, make an, a name for it. Now, and this is more advanced. I could name this differently. I could say all helicopters and name another one called um, all GA planes and name another one called all airliners. You can play like that. So anyway, the, the point is that this is easy to do and uh, and then I can test it and we'll show you that as we go along. Here's my community folder here. I'm just going to take it, move it to community. I'm going to copy it just in case I want to use it again for something. I replace the file because it's the same name that was already there. And now if I go here, I can see that it's there. And so um, so that's the end of that part of it. All right, so um, that's the basic stuff, you guys. Look how simple that is. And I'm not dwelling on it because this is the easy one. This is the one that you just have to take your time and look down the list. Now what most people are asking about, what most people are confused about is, uh, this isn't enough for the target aircraft. I've got a lot more that I bought. There's a whole bunch there. Um, I want to add more to either the source or the target. Okay, so that's where we go into advanced and we're going to move over to the developers who know a lot more about this than I do. And if you take a look at this list here, target aircraft, when you look at this list, I just want to give you a hint before we get into working with the developers. You notice in here, that each of these target aircraft need to know w information from each of these configuration files. I'm just giving you a hint here. So this is why it's trickier. You've got to go find information. If you're going to add another target, you got to find information from each of these files. And some people don't want to do that. Some people are worried about doing that. Let me just say this. If you put this generated folder into your community folder, start your sim, and you end up having crashes, 
then just simply remove that folder and then start your sim and delete your cache, right? So, you know, we'll go through some of that as soon as we see what's happening in the advanced one. All right, so simple as that. And here we'll show you um, what that looks like now. Um, it, it's hard to tell, like go to an, an airport where there's lots of people already and then uh, hopefully they've got that kind of plane. So the best thing to do is go to an airport and see some kind of plane that keeps doing circuits or that's all around or that you want to try. Go and do this model matching, put it in your community folder, and then fire up your sim again, go to the same airport and hope that plane is still there. So that's the only way you can really test it. Someone else has to actually come in with that plane and then you see what it looks like. All right, now let's turn to Andrew first. Andrew's going to just show us an example of that. There are two that for sure that he's talked about already that he doesn't own, but now they actually look like something similar. Let's have a look. That is that is the uh, the H145, which I do not own. So you're looking at it from this angle. I'm going to show the same angle and then. So you don't own it. You don't I don't own, the own it. No, I don't. Uh, no, I I, oh, have actually, 135. I have the 135. I have the 135 because that's free, freeware. I don't have the payware 145. But in the model, in the new model matching multiplayer model right. matching app, I have the 145 and the 125s checked to show as Bell 407. Look how that works, you guys. Here's Darn what it looks thing. like for the rest There's of us. There's a Bell 407. Here's what the what it looks like for the rest of us, you guys. So here's. This is the 145. What <laughs> you know? I mean, it's like this is why we're so confused and why a lot of people are are ranting about this in the sim. This is something we're hoping Microsoft would fix for the last three, almost three years, right? Uh, matter of fact, this is August. Yeah, it's three eight years days. in a few more days. Uh, this sim eight came days, out, right? And eight so days. you know, we've been hoping they would fix that all these years. And here, this crafty, I think it's a team of two people, developers, just said. Here, we'll do something for your own sim anyway, even if it's not for yep. the rest of the world, right? Oh, look at that. That's nice. <laughs> That's supposed to be the F-16. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this is the fun that we have. I mean, it's frustration. Um, and then the fact that he's hovering means he doesn't have the scenery or he has scenery and we don't. I think he has scenery yeah. and we don't. He has scenery and we don't. Yeah, that's it. So anyway, that's, uh, you know, I, I prefer your screen better, Andrew. Are you ready? All right. So in order to um, uh, generate target aircraft naturally, essentially you're going to open up the, uh, you know, the program with the advanced mode off. So advanced mode on, so that now will include the target aircraft um, table. Naturally, these are the list of all of the um, inherent uh, target aircraft that come with M3. Uh, the easy way to tell whether or not one's inherent or, or not, it's this user defined. So when you create a new target aircraft, this checkbox will then become populated with an X, uh, knowing that it's something that you, that you made, that you created. Else, um, as you can see, everything is checked off because again, those are in the inherent uh, target aircraft that come with the game. Or come with the the uh, the the program rather. Um, one thing you notice as well is that only the standard edition aircraft have been included as target aircraft, right, with the base of M3. And the reason being is because everybody has the standard edition aircraft. Right? We we didn't want to put anything. Uh, we we had some discussions about including uh, both the deluxe or the premium deluxe aircraft. Uh, but we were afraid that people that would get the, the program, they would see that maybe these weren't set as targets and they'd go ahead and select them as targets. Uh, and then that might cause some issues. And there's always a potential then of uh, a CDD happening. We may introduce um, separate some separate downloads for those sets of aircraft. So if you do have the deluxe version and you have the additional half dozen aircraft or you know, the additional half a dozen, let's say on top of that with the premium deluxe, and you want to use those as, as target aircraft for considering having those as separate downloads with the warning that, uh, you know, make sure that you have, you know, those additions uh, before, you know, introducing these or using those as targets, but that will just help to um, bring those in without um, having someone resort to actually having to 
create them themselves. To create a new aircraft, of course, it's simply add target aircraft. And what I'm going to do here is just move this. I'm going to select it, uh, which is a freeware version, the, uh, which I got from Plate Sim of TO, the Curtis P40 Tom, uh, Tomahawk. So that's what I'm going to now create as a new um, target aircraft. And you can pretty much name this, you know, any, anything you want. So I'm just going to call it P P40 Tomahawk. Of course, here, add. Um, you can put any notes in there that you want, or else you can just leave it blank. And really, the only th next thing you have to do is just hit target configuration. You'll get the warning message essentially saying, you know, read the documentation. Anything configured wrong here can result in CTDs. And it's pretty much, uh, you know, it's again, kind of be beware. Um, you should have pretty much a little bit of knowledge of how things work or a little bit for knowledge um, before, you know, attempting to do this. It's really just a matter of getting to, really getting to the information that you need to get to, right? So as you see, there's really, there's really like two sets of data um, that necessitates creating a, a target aircraft. Um, first set are the configuration files um, of which, are going to be noted along these separate tabs along the top. And of course, they're all blank right now. But each and each of these is going to be found within your respective, um, you know, airplane folder, which we'll, we'll get to here, get to here in a moment. Uh, and then the second set of information are the folders, essentially where the model, the panel, the sound, sound AI, and texture folders are located at. And there's a certain format you need to follow in order to make that work uh, correctly. And then, which is usually an optional folder. So I'd say the model, panel, sound, sound AI, and texture are, are pretty much required folders. Uh, the effects folder is somewhat optional. It just depends on the on the aircraft. And it's usually pretty, pretty uh, evident whether or not that, uh, that folder exists or not. So, all right, so where do we, or how do we get to, you know, get to this information? So let me kind of push this off, push this off to the side for now. So let me do this, close, bring this. First of all, let me save this just so it's kind of there. We can come back and edit it. Community folder aircraft essentially are, or typically are the only aircraft then that you can set as target aircraft because uh, they will not be encrypted or some of these, especially some of the configuration files will not be encrypted for community aircraft. So going one level down from the community folder, going to the sim objects folder, and then into airplanes, and then into the next folder down to essentially where you start to, you see where all the configuration folders are located at as well as the folders where the models are located, the panel information, the sound files, sort of the, the sound AI or external sound files, uh, and, the, and the textures. Again, I'm not going to go into the details for essentially what is contained you know, within each of these. Uh, there's a lot of information out there for people that want to have a better understanding, more detail, whether it's found within the SDK, um, I think there's a number of uh, YouTube videos as well that kind of go much more detail than this. What we just need to know is in order to create or set up a target aircraft is where to go and then what information needs to be um, populated to make that happen. So I'm going to pull up the, uh, so again, you can see that what I had saved here, which again, it automatically checks the user defined checkbox. So I'm going to double click on that again to get back into it. Again, back into the target configuration. And we get back into, um, into this window. All right. So as you can see, um, the configuration files are here. We don't need all of them. And you don't need necessarily all the information uh, in all of them. But I'm just going to quickly highlight the ones here. As you can see. These are the, the key ones, configuration files. And then again, as noted, along the tabs along, along the top. Open this up in a 
and I use Notepad, Notepad um, plus plus. Select everything that's within this. So this is the AI configuration file. Go to the AI configuration tab here and paste. So it's really just a copy and paste operation. All right, and we'll go on, go on to the next one. So the next one is gonna be the engine configuration file. So again, I'm gonna select all this information. I'm gonna just copy, I'm using the shortcut control C to do that and, and paste. Next one is the flight model configuration file. Again, all the information within the file copy and paste. Now, of course, be very careful that you don't uh, change or overwrite these configuration files as you exit your text editor. Um, you know, if it says, you know, do you want to save? Or I just say, no, just kind of cancel out of that. Uh, you're simply collecting the information that's contained within. All right, so systems, copy and paste. Now, uh, there is this section here for the aircraft configuration file, uh, which is the last one that we need to populate. And as you can see, it just says, you don't need the entire aircraft configuration file, but really the only thing that we're looking for here, and that is that there is a, an effects section all we need then is uh, the effects section many of these configuration files are have headers um, so there will be a section if there is one titled effects so again i have just that portion highlighted again i'm hitting Control c to copy that going back into m3 and and paste it out of course i'm going to save this which is kind of take me back into this just so, um, ju again, just so I have it. And as you can see, so I pull this back up, you know, there's all these tabs now are populated with all of the configuration data. So that part of the, um, again, target configuration is, is complete. So that's the, kind of the first half, if you will. All right, and then to the uh, so then to the like the second half. So once all the configuration uh, information is is populated and kind of double checked, the model folder. You know, guess what? It's it's right there, right? It's kind of like right in front of you. There's the panel folder. There's a sound folder. There's a sound AI folder, right? And then there's a texture folder. Uh, as mentioned, not all aircraft have an effects folder. So if you don't have an effects folder. Um, within the, the aircraft um, folder, uh, there's no need to then include it. You can just leave that blank. There might be some preload information that we're looking at doing uh, to make this process a little bit quicker um, to get maybe a, a user that's adding a, a target aircraft maybe halfway there or maybe most, most of the way there. Um, so we're looking, we're investigating that to see if it is something that we can do to help sort of accelerate this process. But essentially, you'll have to go backslash, dot, dot, backslash, dot, dot, and then back, back, uh, backslash. Now, what you need to put in here next is going to be the actual the name of the, you know, what's in the airplane directory folders one directory up of course the name of this is is the tomahawk so I'm, actually you can do kind of copy and paste information so i'm going to do that to the tomahawk the game doesn't actually use the path that where it's stored on your computer it reads it into a virtual environment so the backslash dot dot backslash dot dot is actually saying the folder you're currently in now which is the model folder the game mm -hmm. thinks it's going to reference the model folder that's not there and you're saying by the dot dots, you're saying go up one level, up one level within within the game. Uh, but the game doesn't see anything above the sim objects folder because you're into the package names then. 
Uh, mm-hmm. The package names have been read in. So you're going up two levels from where the, the game is currently um, uh, loaded. But it's called relative pass. So you can't, but if you put in the full uh, C drive slash, you know, the full location of where that file actually is, the game won't know that it doesn't see your C drive. The game has brought all those packages in to a virtual environment. So it's all, all relative. To finish this, so once you, of course, we know the model folder is then naturally under the timer hawk, right? Uh, folder. And then, of course, we have to do another slash. And then simply model again you're just pointing to where the model f- folder is located at for the tomahawk again in this sort of relative space you can do this in several ways you can do this you know one at a time and just put panel you can go down to each one um pace you can you can jump up and down between each of the different ones so you can you can say sound here and, and okay. sound ai Fly and dive. I think it's imp- I think it's important to actually just point out you're following the aircraft configs models here because they can vary in what they say. They can. Um, so that's a that's a really good really good point, right? So um, so basically I'm, do- type, I'm doing type. a little bit of an assumption here <laughs> that this is exactly how this is is being set up. But you really need to do is like open up the aircraft configuration file. You want to make your way down to the actually to the, the flight sim section. This is where deliveries, you know. So even you know, this is a very simple aircraft. It only has one livery, right? Um, and what you want to note though is that um, again, this is kind of a rather complicated, you know, process to, to I guess to, to talk to understand without knowing some of the you know, inherencies of, of, of how these files are set up. But you can see here, these, these, are, these are the folders, right, that we're, um, we're pointing to. But you notice that they're, they're, that they're blank. It, it, it's looking at a model folder. It's looking at the panel folder. It's looking at the sound folder. It's looking at the texture folder. Uh, this, the way that this is set up is um, Within the sim, it's again, it's this sort of this relative locations. It, it it knows that you know it's pulling this data from the Tomahawk, you know, folder, if you will, the Tomahawk aircraft, and that there that the locations of these folders are where you see them here, right? And again, I I don't know of a, of a better way to to explain that. Um, so- so, but basically, if if they're left blank, it, it saves the developer time having to input the, the you know calling the model folder model and the panel folder panel. If you leave them blank in the config, it will just go and look for a folder called model or folder called panel. Correct. And I think that might be a historic thing from other games in, in previously. But but basically, yeah. if you don't specify anything, it will try and look for a subfolder called model. Yeah. So you, so so the aircraft right. config file there is saying, okay, I need a panel folder. Well, yeah. I don't have a panel folder, so let's back up and look at the directory I'm in right now and find yes. a panel folder. Yes, correct. Yeah. Correct. But if if they have entered any word in there, then yeah. it will look for a folder prefixed with panel dot. And correct. then then the name that you've put in that um yeah, Nothing. so we'll, so that's where we'll it gets do, a bit complicated. So. It does. So we'll we'll do a, we'll do the, a, an example next. You know, for that you've got to you've got to match this exactly. To, so if it's blank, then you just put the word model. If it's got a word in there, then you put model dot and then the word. But Correct. you've got to bear in mind that from from livery to livery, this varies massively. So some some liveries will be using a different model to the base one, and things like that. So, but we'll we'll go through that in a minute um, on a, on a more complicated model and it's of course it's still so even though the aircraft configuration file shows those as blank um this you know that information you know that we still need to populate um yeah. the folder data here within m3 yeah m3 still needs to know where it is correct yeah because yeah. m3 doesn't actually have the textures within the plane it creates yeah. so you're going to find them effectively so you need to state them in full relative path 
And then uh, once we have then this information populated and then kind of double checking, make sure you've got the, the slashes again, slash period, three, period, three, slash, period, period, yeah. slash. Three slashes, two sets of double dots. Yep. And then actually the, the name of the, essentially the airplane or the, which is under the airplane directory, yeah. Tomahawk, and then slash again. And then that will point to the, of course, the, the, the folder and simply hit, hit, add model um, variation. Um, and at least from a configuration standpoint, pointing to where uh, the respective or the relative folders are at, we're, we're almost 100% done. There's just two other things that we need to do. Um, so first is simply, you know, do you want to enable this, uh, you know, playing as a matching target? The reason it's in there is because if you take something out of the community folder using add-ons linker, you can come in here and disable the target without upsetting your source matching because your plane doesn't exist anymore. All source planes that are pointing at that target will show up in the generated package at the end. All right. So let's say let's want to make you know make this enable. So now it will be something then that can be uh, targeted. And then the very last thing. Um, or it could be the very, very first thing. Very, <laughs> very important. This, <laughs> but, but, but very important, right? And all you get here is two options. You either get airplane or, or helicopter, but not all helicopters are helicopters. The Bell 407. Mm -hmm. It's actually an airplane as a model. Correct. Yeah. As a so flight is, model. Correct. It is the flight model. Yeah. Yeah. That's Bizarrely. exactly correct. Right. Yeah. So, whereas the, uh, the Cabri you know, a the G2 is a helicopter, right? <laughs> Now, where do you get this information from? Well, and we kind of note here where, where it is, and it's, I think it's also in the documentation. What you want to do is open up your aircraft configuration file, look under the general uh, tab or section under category. So again, we can, um, I think I had that here. So here's aircraft configuration. So it's typically it's at the near the top. Category and, airplane. Exactly. So here it is. So this, and again, and, and it gets really something really important, especially, I mean, pretty much airplane is going to be the majority of, of course, all airplanes. It's always going to be airplane. It doesn't matter if it's a jet, it doesn't matter if it's a, you know, twin engine prop, whatever. It's, typically, it's always going to be airplane. Helicopters, if it's used, if it's a newer helicopter, especially, those are being released like in, you know, marketplace or but again, some of the older legacy, you know, helicopters are still using the, the airplane flight model. And it's really important because this will, again, cause a crash to desktop if you don't put the right information in here. That's where we have the, the warnings. Um, and again, it made things a little bit complicated when, when Microsoft introduced, you know, the updated flight model, but it's, you know, for, for good reason. Uh, but there is a difference and it, it is something that needs to be, you know, make sure you select the correct one. For this of course this is a, an airplane so for the p40 so we'll put airplane and save save again and that's it you see all these the check boxes are, are all here um there is just one model count essentially one or one livery yeah. um right that's that's just sort of an informational um informational column and again, it will be not only back to your source aircraft and you have, you know, some aircraft that you wish to, you know, to tie it to the P-40 again will be, um, you know, oops, will be on the, the checklist, something that will be, that is selectable and that you can, um, you know, that you can, that you can put in and you can select. One good way of testing your model once you created it is to to save your current config out um, just so you save all mm -hmm. your targets uh, that you've set mm -hmm. uh, and then change every single plane to your new target aircraft mm -hmm. and then generate the package, run the game, and then you should see immediately whether, whether it's working or not. You can export all, you know, you can put it into a, a, a folder, save it, and then, and then start making these so whole scale basically, changes. Basically, right? you're making a backup. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah, and exactly. there, you know, there there are a couple of different ways to, as Danny noted, you can either hit Control A, right, which is sort of a normal Windows command. So essentially, everything is selected, right? Yeah. Or you can just click in this 
which is sort of an Excel trick, right? Click in, the, in this space. Um, and then you can say, all right, I am going to go down here and say assign selected aircraft, which is everything to the Tomahawk and go. Let it let it do its thing, and now everything is a is a tomahawk, right? And then now you generate the package from this. Well, of course you have to the nap. You know, you can do the same thing. You can say, all right, I'm going to make everything look like. So you have to make sure you're matching and enabled as well as checked, right? So you need those two things. Now you generate the package. And now it'll create the new folders with all these entries, everything pointing right or directing to the tomahawk and you go into the game and you should see again the majority of the aircraft in game then should appear as it's as a good, a good way to test because if you spawn in uh, new york and you get crashed the desktop before you even get to see the plane you know before it even gets to the the uh the, the you know the start window or whatever and it's panning around the airport you're You'll get the crash to desktop before that. It, you know, it, you'll know it's not working straight away. Um, but this right. is a good way to test it, basically. Uh, but we thoroughly recommend testing every plane you do add as a as a, as a target, just to make sure you're not going to get that suddenly occur randomly in the future when so, someone appears in in a plane you're trying to match. You know, right? Because essentially, you know, yeah, you you go to uh, Laguardia, right, or you go to LAX and. Exactly. Essentially, there's going to be enough aircraft there to kind of test the theory, right, and be able yeah. to test. It. One thing we, we wanted to allow people to do is, no, you can't, as an end user, you can't edit this information, right? But you can at least view it um, and kind of get an, yeah, kind of get an idea like, all right, you know, how did you guys, you know, put the DC-3 in, right? And, you know, what does it, what does it look like? And so you can... Essentially, you can go to your, now of course, this is uh, an official aircraft, right? So, and it is one, right? Fortunately, that uh, Microsoft said, all right, you know, we, we have access to, you know, the configuration files for it. Um, but you can, you can check out, you know, all the configuration data. As you can see, it's kind of grayed out, you know, you can't change it. But again, you can review it. You can see it again. You can see just only the effects section for the aircraft configuration was included for the DC-3. And then you can also see the, um, you know, the various, again, you can't do any of this. All the functionality is, is done, but you can view or at least look at how each oh, of the yeah. So each that's of how the they did the two big cargo version. And that's how they did the other livery. That's right. That's yeah. right. If you notice this, this so this package is split across multiple folders, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So all mm -hmm. the liveries, the, you know, the base model, and you find that a lot with the Microsoft default planes. The base model is just just the the bare bones. You know, the def well, well, in fact, in, I think in this case, yeah, it's the white and metal liveries. Yeah, you can see on the right there on the textures, and then these other ones are in separate folders, uh, separate models. Uh, so in some cases, they've, um, yeah, in fact, they've even popped the models into these separate folders as well so on other planes you'll notice that they actually go back to the original dc3 folder for their models but just a different texture file in their folder but on this occasion uh for the dc3 they actually put um more more folders with actual models in them so um but you can see in the panel folder um section they actually refer back to the the mm -hmm. the original mm -hmm. DC three panels in on some occasions. Yeah. So right. but you, but all this information is directly in the livery model, you know, the, the, the things we showed you earlier with the aircraft configuration. You uh, have to but, match what it's saying yeah. exactly on those Correct. because it would be telling you where it gets it from. Yeah, this is about as I think about as complicated as it gets. Um, and there's sometimes some flavors in between. Yeah. And there's also another thing we haven't taught you yet is these model variations will be using a variation tick at the top. When you when you have a, a, mo a model with liveries that are in, a, in uh, different, different packages, in this case, the livery 
packages in the aircraft config can't contain things like the general section again, because otherwise you're effectively saying that's a new plane and it would need all its individual AI engines.config. At the top, it will state it's a variation of a plane. And then it knows where to get all its information, like the iCow information. Yeah, let me see. Right yeah, yeah, this right there here, you right? You're talking yeah. about the base, base so container. Very, right? Yeah, so liv <laughs> livery additions tend to be a very super cut down aircraft.config. And all the data it had about all the iCow and everything, it, it, they're not specified. All that's specified is the flights in dot zero or dot one, dot two, which are the livery variations and where it can get its models from because they're using a special function called variation and it says base container equals and that's where the base model is so everything else it says well you haven't specified that and it goes off to that base base plane mm -hmm. to get get to get it mm -hmm. um, so these are kind of just if you think about it they're just appending onto the aircraft config of the original folder which is at the top so you kind of have to do a bit of joining together here <laughs> so, so if it specifies anything in these, so this is a livery uh, uh, only uh, package. So if it specifies packed cargo with no, um, you know, no relative path specified, then it means it's looking into the directory of itself. Mm -hmm. So um, which version, which um, AI config did you just open there, Matt? So this would be the uh, livery yeah, aviators. So yeah. Yep. So it's this uh, third one. I can't highlight it or anything, but it's this third line down right here, going across. So the fact that there's no relative path filled out on the model there in that aircraft config is indicating that the the folder itself resides in the livery package that you're looking at. So that's why the path you put in um, M3 is to the livery package, not to the base package. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the best thing to learn, the best way to learn is look at, um, you know, an original aircraft config in the liveries for, for one of the default planes like this and just see why we've done it, you know, why we've done it that way. Um, what, what, what path have we used? You know, how does that model there where it just says Pat's cargo translate into that whole string we've put in? Well, we're referencing the livery package itself because you've got to remember everything is relative so that that PATS cargo being specified is relative to the package, you're, the aircraft config you're looking at. Um, but you in M3 have to put the, you know, where is that package? Export, delete, import. Yeah, absolutely. So once um, you've got the Tomahawk set up, you can save that. And what you notice is, um, so hit the export, right? So export or import on the, on the lower right hand side here. But what you notice is um, only the Tomahawk, right, uh, is 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 exported, um, and the same thing is when you when you import aircraft as well. So if I was, you know, if I was select this and I can call it test, well, anything you want it saves it in this kind of special file format. Of course, there's only one, so it goes really fast. And then when you go to import that same that same file. Um, so it says, hey, it already exists, but I could say, oh, just, you know, import in a ways. But, but it won't import if, it, if you've already got it. Yeah, okay, yeah, so it'll, it'll, it'll note that. So, but if, say yes, but it doesn't do anything. Yeah. yeah. But you know, the, and the nice thing about that feature too is let's say you were you know messing around and this this is the same thing for source aircraft right and you, you hit the delete key there's no undo button in m3 so then you can go well okay well i i have this you know i have my backup and you can say you know import all and then you know now you've, you've got it back again but right. it doesn't enable it as a target, though, until you're happy. Because to put that tick on, there has to be a few checks going in place. Yeah, true, right. But so when, you what you don't realize it. is when you enable that and push save, there's a, it's checking all those, all that data's filled out. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then it enables if it's happy. Correct. So the import, you might have to just go through. And if you want to just find your planes that are you made, then you can put the tick on at the top saying user defined only. So you can just see the stuff that you're doing and, uh, you know, and they're, they're yours. And yeah. Correct. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, and there's, yeah and, but the export window alone, sh- it'll bring up a different window anyway. But it, that's just as, if you're trying to find the planes you've made in all that mess, you can just put that tick on. So I could select like everything on here and hit delete. All right. We want to delete everything. Yes. But what you notice is you can't delete the inherent target aircraft. When you do an export operation or an import, that's why you don't even export or import, you know, the, the standard supplied target aircraft. They're mm. always going to be there. So, um, so what we do is we'll have the new, the new version will contain the standard, all the standard edition planes that, you know, cause obviously you pointed out a couple that are missing. And as a support in download, there will be a, sta- a deluxe, uh, it's called an MMMT file, which is you just created there, Mark, yep. when you did yep. the export. Correct. Yep. So when you export source craft, they're MMMS files. And when you export target aircraft, they're MMMT files. Um, so what, what we'll do is we'll supply two, two MMMT files, which contain deluxe and premium. Open up, open the old version, export your plane, your, yep. your configuration. Yep. Was it install the new version and then go open the new version and import your old stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you need to do that for source and target planes because they're two separate exports. Yeah. Right. But once people have done that, once they're, they're cotton on to the fact that, you know, that can start building libraries. Okay, guys, this is a good point to mention that you've gone to great detail to show us how to manually add configuration information from various files into the target aircraft. What we'd like to announce is that in the next version of this product, right now we're looking at version 1.3, the next version should probably be called 1.4. This new feature that's in beta right now will automatically collect information from these files and their folder locations for us in a discovery process and make this process a whole lot easier and more predictable for us. Look forward to that in the next version that should be released maybe even days after this video has been produced and that's going to make it a lot easier for the rest of us. Let's take a look at the most frequently asked questions. Here we are at flysim.to where you find the product. And if you take a look at the description, there's a lot of information here. First steps, expectations, here are the developer's names, distribution, it's freeware. But here is the section that I'm interested in here, frequently asked questions. Now in here you can see they've got it. You could read this yourself. There's a lot in here. How does MSFS match multiplayer aircraft in the game? What is a source aircraft? What is a target aircraft? So this is really good. You can walk through here and read all of this stuff. Why would you? Why would I use M3 even if I don't plan on using the model matching feature? All right, and it says in here besides model matching, M3 updates the Microsoft ICAO aircraft designator database. That eliminates seeing a bonanza as an example when someone comes into your view. So it would be good to use this even in its basic mode. That would be perfect. Down here, uh, does using M3 package take up more system resources and or add time to load MSFS? For load times, there will be a slightly longer load time due to the aircraft configuration files being read by MSFS to construct its internal databases. This happens in your community folder all the time with every single aircraft, every single livery, everything you've got in there, it's going to load and uh, and scenery and liveries are seem to be the, what take the longest. Sometimes it starts up momentarily when I hit generate package, but most times it doesn't. Why is that? And when it sees a new ICAO code has been added or the existing database, it has to do something with it. So these are some of the, the, the most frequently asked questions. When you take a look at the comments that people have said in here, excellent quality add on. Many thanks for most, what must have been considerable effort to achieve. A must for everyone flying multiplayer works with no issues. Excellent add on. So you can see all of that and you can read more. All right. And then, uh, and, and just see what other people are saying about it, but certainly it's uh, being met with uh, great enthusiasm. So they've got some information there in their manual. They have a section called tips and tricks. And in here you can see they've got them numbered. You can read each one of these and it talks about some of the settings that will help you to make things smoother. 
in the very first one. I'm not going to read them all to you. You can read them yourself. But in the first one with MSFS under traffic settings, make sure you have use generic aircraft models, multiplayer set to off, and traffic variation is set to ultra. That's going to help a lot. <clears throat> if you see a generic multiplayer aircraft in the sim, it's likely because it hasn't been matched or its ICAO aircraft designator isn't in the database. And so you would have to import a source aircraft. And it talks more about using, in this example here, oops, using control or shift keys to select multiple source aircraft for setting to a target. Like in the case of helicopters, like you saw earlier in my example, way earlier in this tutorial, where I just simply searched for helicopter type and then all the helicopters that I don't have, which was most of them, I made them go to a 407 or something like that. So this is handy too. Go and take a look at the tips and tricks in the book and, uh, and that'll help a lot. Well, there you have it. We've covered a lot of ground in this video tutorial. And I want to thank you for your patience. I hope you learned a lot. I hope there was some insight and give you an idea of what made up the product. It also gives us a, an appreciation for the amount of work that was involved in gathering all this data, all of the source planes and making this interface for us to make this happen so easily. We want to thank Danny Malloy and Fly and Dive for their patience in showing us how to use this product properly. We also want to thank Andrew for jumping in and helping us throughout with asking some questions and doing some testing. And we also want to thank the many testers that helped with putting this product together. You can leave your questions and comments below and we can also contact them on flightsim.to. Enjoy everybody. It's been my pleasure. I'm Howard of Forward to Learn to Fly.